okay so am i live i guess i'm live so i'll wait for a couple of more moments for uh, students to join then i can uh, start with the revision uh so hello students uh, good evening so we will be starting with the revision of chapter number 2 before i start uh, humble apologies for not able to make it yesterday because uh, because of some technical error because it was the very first time i was uh, you know doing youtube live and uh, i you know because of some network issues and i was just at my home so i couldn't uh, uh, make it better so uh, be before i start i want to know from your side that whether my audio is audible to you whether you can hear what i say if yes then drop a comment because i don't want to talk for next one hour being mute and just please start uh, revising uh, everything so before i start i want to give certain disclaimers uh, the 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 first disclaimer is so i am not at my studio so it is it is a home environment so in the middle of the class you may hear suddenly a calling bell or some telephone ringing or you know dog barking or bird chirping so you don't have to worry you just have to focus on me so that is uh, that is the first thing and uh, talking about directly talking about your uh, syllabus so we are going to start with the revision of chapter number 2 now why are we not starting with chapter number 3 chapter number 1 4 5 it's very very simple chapter number 2 is one of the most easiest chapter and it is one chapter where you can score the maximum marks so in chapter number 2 before i start i want you to have this material the material which has around uh, 41 questions now where is this material this material is there in one fin application you have to go to the free resources notes eis you have this material where there is 41 questions these are the important 41 questions we are doing now if you already have it then you can refer it simultaneously along with the class and if you don't have it if you don't have it then what do we do the answer is very simple if you don't have it then you can refer your study material study material as well into study material because both questions and answer which, which is there in this material as well as what is there in the study material is both one and the same so what i have done is i have tried to concise it here so we have around 41 questions now this am i going to talk about all the 41 questions in this one hour it is highly not possible because even if you do the mathematics it will take one and half minutes for each question uh, so if, if i if i hurry in such a way then revision won't be possible so what i decided is i want to divide this 41 questions into two parts 20 questions what i will be doing it today and rest 20 questions i'll be doing it tomorrow so that i'll give you time so after i do i after i first explain this 20 questions you can take time of the evening then you can study this 20 questions and later on you can uh, revise it and tomorrow we can talk about the rest 20 questions is that okay with everybody or else we can go for a 2 to 3 hours of revision <coughs> so which i don't think uh, you would be wanting and i would be wanting to explain at once so uh, shall we begin then yes so let us talk about chapter number 2 before we start let us start with a story that is why exactly are we studying this subject why are we studying this subject now imagine imagine you are in the 17th century 17th century and you want to you want to communicate with your friend you want to know about your friend's health so what would you do you would take a piece of paper and you would write a letter to him saying that uh, you know dear friend i just wanted to inquire about your health how are you so you write this letter then you go to post office imagining there was post office back then then you would post it so it would take four days of time for the letter to reach to your friend and imagining that your friend replies on the same day then it would again take four more days for the letter to reach you back so it would take 8 days of time for you to get one simple information about your friend correct so you wanted to know what is the health of your friend and it took 8 days of your time but now the time has changed now you just take your mobile phone and you just open your whatsapp and you just send your friend how are you and within fraction of second your friend will reply back to you saying he is fine or he is not keeping well but just compare earlier days it would take 8 days but now it is only taking fraction of seconds and i am talking from individual point of view just as a common person just as a common person it is 
from 8 days have reduced it down to fraction of seconds now this is possible with the help of using electronic equipments so these days i've started using computers i've started using mobile phones tablets ipad for all purposes so as an individual when i'm adopting to new technologies can business stay behind so that is way even businesses have shifted to even businesses have shifted to information system so when i talk about information system i am talking about combination of what in the third chapter if you have studied already you would know what is information system it is a combination of what hardware software data people and network these are the five things but but second chapter only talks about software so second chapter is a study of software now what software are we going to talk about all the software are we talking about video editing software audio editing software answer is no we are going to talk about that software which is relevant for us as a chartered accountant now this software is nothing but accounting software so the name of the chapter itself is finance and accounting system so we need to know as chartered accountants how this accounting software work as a ca it is okay it is okay for you to not to know how video software works how auditing software works but you need to know in and out of accounting software so this entire chapter is about accounting and sorry finance and accounting softwares so the first question first question which is there in the material if you don't have the material then i'll read out the question to you the question is write short note on finance and accounting system write a short note on finance and accounting system so this is your first pc question this is your 11th standard question so you need to talk about what is finance and accounting system so it is it starts with recording of transaction and summarizing of transaction so if i'm talking about computer's point of view what and all are there there is there is first inputs then processing of data then there is output about this we will talk more subsequently so now the second question is second question is how do you divide the businesses how do you divide the businesses because when you when as a chartered accountant you have to suggest your client what type of software you should use what type of software you should use as a chartered accountant you need to know what type of business your client is into your client can be majorly into three types of businesses he could be in manufacturing business he could be in retail business and he could be in service sector business now what do you mean by manufacturing business manufacturing business means they purchase the raw material they process it they manufacture it then they sell it so this is manufacturing unit then there is retail business so in retail business what happens you purchase the goods you don't process it you just sell it and as far as service sector is concerned as chart accountants do you purchase any raw materials prime of ac no maybe maybe you purchase some stapler pins maybe somebody purchase a4 sheets but your purchase is not the major activity what is the major activity rendering of services is the major activity now why is this relevant because when you are advising your client what you specifically want in that software you need to understand the business for example if some client comes and he says he is into manufacturing business you need to advise your client look you need to purchase a software which supports inventory module which supports inventory module so there should be a mechanism to handle the inventory because as a manufacturer he needs to know what is the raw material balance he has what is opening stock how much is manufactured and how much is left same thing for the retailer also you need to tell him that if you are if you are selecting some software for your business if you are selecting some software for your business then make sure that the software has inventory module but let us say some client comes to you who is in service business who is in service business now will you tell him that uh, you know you need to purchase a software which has inventory module answer is no you will say any software would do for you you don't have to pick a software which has inventory module so this is where as a chartered accountant you need to first classify business so business could be business could be uh, trading business manufacturing business or service business so there is a question from nehal chowdhury that sir uh, aap amendments bhi cover karoge so hindi is not my first language so do not laugh at it yes so the question is whether i will color, uh, cover the amendments i say yes so i will not going to cover separately the amendment portion i'm going to cover the entire the entire chapter when i say entire chapter from the updated material it will cover the amendment so if you are here for the amendment purpose also you can continue watching the class now now comes now we are really entering into the chapter till now we were just warming up
third question is they are talking about what are the different types of accounting vouchers so there is a, <coughs> a slight mistake in the question make that question as what do you mean by accounting vouchers or write a brief note on accounting voucher now before i go into uh, question number 3 let me discuss something about voucher now first have you ever thought that how does the software does accounting how does a software does accounting now you may say that it took good 2 to 3 year time for you to understand accounting your teacher started with the teaching you accounting they said there are three types of account the golden rule that is there is personal account and there is real account and there is nominal account debit what comes in credit what goes out debit the receiver credit the giver all these things they have taught you back then now comes a question how does software does the accounting even whether the software also knows all these golden entries personal account real account nominal account answer is no software does not know head and tail of your accounting system only you know after studying so long how to pass accounting entries then comes the next question if software doesn't know how to pass accounting entries then how does it pass entry to understand that before discussing chapter number 3 we need to go to chapter number 5 how are accounting ledgers from a software perspective that is the question number 5 we need to understand how software will start thinking when it comes to accounting answer is very simple when you open that software when you open that software you have to create the ledgers so when you create the ledger you need to tell the software what type of account is it is it the account which has debit balance or is it the account which has credit balance now you tell me what type of accounts have debit balance if it is expense it has debit balance or if it is asset it has debit balance now what type of accounts have credit balance if it is income it has credit balance or if it is liability it has credit balance now who knows it whether software knows it or you know it you know it so you need to tell the software first so let me ask you a question let us say you are you are creating an account you are creating an account called as printing and stationery so now you want to create the ledger in the computer how are you going to create first thing is you need to tell the software whether it has a debit balance or credit balance tell me whether it has a credit balance or debit balance you know that printing and stationery has debit balance next question is whether printing and stationery will come in your profit and loss account or it will come in your balance sheet it will come you will say sir what is this question very simple question you will say it will come in profit and loss account but software doesn't know it so you need to tell this is the account which has a debit balance and it will come in profit and loss account only then only then when your software is generating report your printing and stationery will be in your profit and loss account by mistake by mistake let us say that you said printing and machinery will come in the balance sheet now when you are generating the balance sheet printing and stationery head will be in your balance sheet you cannot blame the software because software does what you ask it to do that is where as a chartered accountant you need to know how does this software functions correct so the fifth question the fifth question is how are accounting ledgers created from a software perspective so first thing is you have to define whether it is a debit balance or credit balance next answer is you need to tell whether it comes in profit and loss account or whether it comes in balance sheet so that is the fifth question now before i go back there is one more question sir is this video will be available in youtube after the live lecture is completed i guess yes i guess it will be available it should be available next is now we are going again back to vouchers so i said as a user one second okay so i said as a user you have to tell the computer about what type of account it is going to be now you define you define that this is going to be in the balance sheet and this is going to be in the profit and loss account that is the first time process we call it as a configuration process now let us talk about subsequent activities now let us say you want to pass some entries you want to pass some entries can you simply pass a journal entry and expect the software to do the job answer is no understand that software is dumb software is not as smart as you so you being a smart person you need to tell the computer what type of entry is it so you need to first intimate the computer whenever i am saying the word computer you need to understand i am referring to software so you need to first tell the computer so i am going to pass an entry then you are supposed to pass the entry so intimation is done by intimation means informing the computer is done by selecting a voucher type 
Uh, for example, let us say you made a sale. Now you want to pass the journal entry. What is the journal entry for sale? Simple thing. It is debtor's account equated to sales account if it is a credit sale. Or if it is a cash sale, it is going to be cash account debited to sales account. Now, can you directly pass the entry? Answer is no. You have to first intimate the computer. You have to first inform the computer. So now, how are you going to inform the computer? You are going to select the voucher type. So let us go to question number six. The question number six, they ask, what are the types of accounting vouchers? The question is they're asking only about accounting vouchers and you need to talk about accounting vouchers from the software perspective now first one is whenever you are making a sale transaction you need to inform the computer by selecting a voucher type so what is the voucher you are going to choose you are going to choose a voucher type called as sales so it could be for a cash sale or it could be for a credit sale next let us talk about a voucher type called as contra so tell me when do you pass contra entries when do you pass contra entries? So this is a very simple question we studied in our 11th standard. We pass contra entries when we actually deposit cash to the bank or withdraw cash from the bank or transfer money from one bank account to another bank account or transfer cash from one entity of mine to another entity of mine. I pass contra entry. Now, before directly passing the contra entry, that is cash account debited to bank account, what will I tell? I have to inform the computer. So I'm going to select voucher type called as contra. Next, if I have to make some payment, if I have to make some payment before passing an entry, before passing an entry, which entry? If I'm making a payment, what is going to the entry? Let's say credit or second debited to cash account. That is a payment entry. I have to first inform the computer saying that. So I'm going to pass a payment entry. So I'm going to choose a voucher type called as payment. Then I'm going to pass the entries. Receipt. When I'm going to pass this entry, receipt I'm going to pass when I'm receiving some amount of money. Next, journal. I'm going to select the voucher type called as journal when I am passing an entry at the normally at the year end. For example, depreciation entry. So what is the depreciation entry? Entry is going to be depreciation account debited to fixed asset. So before passing this entry, I need to choose the voucher type called as journal. If I have to pass some provision entries, some bad debts return of entries, all these things before passing entries, I need to tell the software, look, an entry is coming. Look, this is the journal entry. When I'm going to choose sales as a voucher type, when I'm passing a sale entry, I will first choose a voucher type called as sale. If I'm making a purchase, then I'll intimate the computer saying that I am making a purchase entry. Now, now next, these were the easier one. Next is little trickier one. That is credit note and debit note. Now, when do I issue credit note? That is a very important question. Credit note normally I issue when I have to reduce the balance of my data or increase the balance of my credit. Let me give an example. Let's say that I sold goods worth rupees ten thousand. I sold goods worth rupees ten thousand. Now, the buyer comes to me and he says, "Sir, can I only pay nine thousand rupees?" And I will say subsequently I agree, okay, 9,000 means 9,000 give. So now, originally I recorded as 10,000 rupees. Now I want to reduce it to 9,000. So I want to reduce 1,000 rupees. So this I can do by issuing something called as credit note. So when I issue credit note, when I have to reduce the balance, I issue credit note. So on the other hand, when do I have to debit note? When I have to increase the balance of my data, I issue something called as debit note. Let us say I made sale of 5,000 rupees. But then I realize it's not 5,000 rupees item, it is 8,000 rupees item. So what do I do? To increase the balance from 5,000 rupees to 8,000 rupees, I issue a debit note. The last one is memorandum. So when do I use a voucher type called as memorandum? Now, memorandum is a voucher type when I use. I use this voucher type when I don't want an entry to affect my trial balance. Sir, can you give an example? Obviously, yes. In your foundation, in your foundation, if you have not skipped, then you should have studied a chapter called as consignment. So in consignment, what would happen? There would be a consigner, then there would be a consignee. Then the question would start. Mr. A, a consigner sent goods costing rupees 100 at 125 to his consignee. This is how the question used to start. So the goods costing rupees 100 was sent at 125. Now, whether that 25 rupees is the profit, answer is no. Goods is not actually sold. Goods is just Send to the consignee. So you are not supposed to book the profit of 25 rupees. You are not supposed to record the profit of 25 rupees. In such cases, you will tell the software, look, I am entering something in the software, but I don't want it to go to the trial balance. Hence, 
record it as a memorandum entry so these are all the different voucher types as far as accounting is concerned so why do you choose a voucher you choose a particular voucher to inform the computer inform the computer that what type of entry you are going to pass because you are the smart person software is not that is where you need to inform the software before you pass the entry now whenever you choose a voucher that particular voucher should also have a number associated with it some unique number so now let us say you are passing the first sale entry so the voucher number can be it may be anything what you give but normally let us say for example it could be sl001 that is for the first sale transaction for the second sale transaction it should be sl002 can it be some xyz001 and abc123 you can't make that way it has to be in a in a specific order it has to be in a specific order so if the first voucher number is 1 next has to be 2 then next has to be 3 for sale it could be sl001 for purchases it could be pr001 pr002 that is where the voucher number is so that is what question number 3 is about now next is question number 4 Now, question number four is about uh, now for all the people who are writing comments. Uh, so, as this is the very first time, so what I will be doing is I will be going through your comments at the end, and I will be more focusing on completing those questions. And once the twenty questions are done, and if still the time permits, and if you are still in the mood to listen to the classes, then I will go through all the questions and I will answer those questions. Till then, if you want, you can go on writing the. So at the end I will read it. Or alternatively, what you can do is you can go to one fin application. There you can post the questions. They, then when I am taking classes tomorrow, I can hand pick those questions. And I can answer it for an easier purpose. Next question number four. That is explain the accounting process cycle from a software perspective. They are not asking from a student perspective, from a human perspective. They are asking from a software perspective. Remember, remember when you were in your level standard. how you do your accounting first your teacher would dictate some uh, transaction a purchased goods or b sold goods all these things so how would you record it you would pass a journal entry from journal from journal it would go to ledger from ledger you would do the balancing then you would go to the trial balance from balance sheet profit and loss account all these things you would manually prepare but when we are talking from a software point of view when we are talking from a software point of view you don't do all these things the only thing what you do is you do the actual transaction that is you sell you sell the goods to your customer and you pass one single entry you are going to pass one single entry by choosing the voucher that's it the rest everything software does so what do you do you enter into the transaction you sell the goods to your customer you make one voucher entry then ledger posting balance balancing profit and loss account trial balance balance sheet everything is done by the software that is what question number 4 is then maybe maybe at the year end certain adjustment entries you need to pass maybe certain things software will not calculate for example you want to write off bad debts now bad debts you need to pass a separate entry which software will not know how much is going to the bad debts depreciation normally you calculate and you enter into the system apart from this 99% of the accounting software will do only one or two percentage you need to enter so we are done with question number 5 we are done with question number 6 next that is question number 7 now let me read out the question for you if you don't have the material with you that is differentiate between master data and non master data in the context of accounting system very important question that has come in may 2018 rtp so now what is the master data and what is the non master data now master data simple example to be your contacts in your mobile phone there is contacts a small application in that everybody's number starts to so if you want to call your friend rather than dialing that entire ten number what will you do you will go to contacts you will find his name and you will just call him so some question that is sir it is available in pdf so for the people who joined just now it is available in one fin application or after this particular video i can put it in the description as well so now what is master data i said i said it is in the it for example it is the contacts in your mobile phone rather than dialing entire ten numbers what are you going to do you are just going to select the number you are going to call your friend now why why didn't you type ten numbers so you would say so first thing is you would remember entire ten number or you would say 
sir while typing 10 numbers each and every time maybe maybe sometimes i may dial the wrong number that is where i don't want to dial it wrong i know it my friend is not going to change his number again and again so what will i do i will just save his mobile number so this is exactly the same so when you are using software also when you are using some information again and again you are going to save that information in the software so that you don't make mistakes so this type of data is called as master data now there is something else that is non master data what is non master data that is which is not permanent which is temporary or which keeps on changing with every transaction now let us say that let us say that your customer let us say there is one customer who keeps on coming to your store again and again on a daily basis so what are the information you want to store about your customer that is your customer name customer address customer uh, mobile number customer gst number all this information will not change on a daily basis and you don't want to enter into your software on a daily basis again and again so what will you do you will just save that information in the software so we call this as master data now let us say your customer today came let us say you are in some uh, some grocery store so today he came and purchased sugar uh, is it master data no you are not going to save that information because tomorrow he is not going to purchase the same thing tomorrow he will he may come and purchase rice so these are non master data so these are called as transactional data so what data is saved in the system that is master data what data is not saved in the system is non master data so they are asking about difference between master data and non master data so in examination there may be a question in which they are asking write a brief note about master data or they may also ask a question saying that write a brief note on non master data or they may ask a write a note on difference between master data and non master data <laughs> so first first point of difference is the meaning of master data so meaning is these types master data is relatively permanent relatively permanent because your customer may change his address it is not that entire life long lifetime he is going to stay in the same house maybe he may change his house from one house to another so his address may change but it is relatively permanent not daily is going to change whereas non master data is non permanent today it might be something else tomorrow it may be something else next is types of <coughs> master data that is accounting master data inventory master data payroll master data statutory master data about this we will discuss subsequently because there is one more article question that is what are the different types of master data next is uh, they are talking about significance of master data and they say all business process models must use the common master data now let us say that there is a business and it has different departments there is a department for sales then there is separate department for purchases then there is different department for hr so now one particular master data should be used the same data should be used between all your departments about this also we will discuss when you are going to talk about erps it is too early to discuss more about this now data input data input means how are you going to enter this information data input is if it is master data you are not going to enter again and again you are going to just select it from the available list only once when for the very first time you are going to record it only once you are going to record it and for the subsequent times you are going to just select it just like contacts in your mobile phone only for the first time you are going to record it subsequent times you are going to just select it whereas transaction data or non master data you are going to type each and every time next is changes to the data so master data not subject to frequent changes transactional data on a daily basis it happens then they say master data is done less master data master data entry is done less frequently that is only once you do it then you don't change it whereas transactional data is entered by the user so it is not going to change so if, even if you have to if, if you want to change it then the person who has entered the transactional data will not be allowed to change it some senior has to come and change it So next question is that is question number eight. What are the types of master data in the context of accounting system? So this is what I was talking about. Again, this is an RTP question. This is an RTP question, important question. So whenever I say this is an RTP question, you need to understand that this is a important question from your examination point. So they are going to talk about. They say, as far as accounting is concerned, there could be. accounting master data there could be inventory master data there could be uh, that is hr master data that is payroll master data and there could be statutory master data now talking about accounting master data 
I am I am talking about ledger names, the names of the accounts. It is not going to change daily. If uh, today your customer name is ABC and you open an account called as AB, Mr. AB's account, then tomorrow it is not going to change. So, as far as accounting master data is concerned, name of the account could be an example of accounting master data. When I am talking about inventory master data, can you give me example of what are the information which is there in inventory master data? It could be. the names of your inventory is now let us see you are in the business of selling mobile phones and you are in the business of selling laptops so you know that what are, what mobile phones you are going to sell or you know that what laptops you are going to sell so information about this products you are going to enter into your system so it could be let's say you are going to sell only three types of mobile phone it could be apple it could be samsung or it could be one plus so these three you know that you are only going to sell these three types of mobile phones so the name of these three mobile phones are selected or are entered in your accounting software all right so next is payroll master data now what are the information which is there in your payroll master data simple it could be name of employees it could be their uh, the, the category where they belong to for example when an employee join he could be an unskilled employee then when is promoted he could be semi skilled then he could be skilled employee so the category of your employee you have to enter in your payroll master data next one is statutory master data now what is statutory master data statutory master data in simple words it refers to tax details so what types of taxes are applicable for a business it could be it could be gst or it could be tds it could be gst or it could be tds that is income tax compliance or many other laws are applicable to a business so in in its entirety everything put together we call it as statutory master data now let us say that you are selling mobile phones the rate of gst applicable for mobile phone let us say it is 18 percentage so you don't enter this 18 percentage every time you make a sales so this information is saved in the software so every time you are going to pass a sale entry automatically this 18 percentage will come so if not then every time you have to type the sales uh, the tax rate maybe sometimes instead of entering 18 percentage you may enter 5 percentage or 12 percentage that may mistakes so that is question number 8 next let's go to next question that is uh, differentiate between front end and back end in the context of accounting system now what is a front end now what is a front end now now imagine imagine because i don't have a, a green screen and animation coming here so i want your imagination to help me better so now let us say this is a mobile phone this is the mobile phone imagine so don't put in the comment box saying that sir this is not a mobile phone imagine this is the mobile phone and this is a screen of your mobile phone and what you can see here what you can see here is called as front end what you can see here is called as front end now comes the question what is the back end now don't say this is the back end this is the back end no this is the front end and what happens inside this what happens inside this is called as back end not the back part now they are asking about differentiate between front end and the back end now you know it front end is something what you can See, front end is something you can see and back end is something you cannot see so they are saying what is the difference first difference is same front end is what user sees back end is something user does not see sir can i write this answer no you have to write the answer what is there in the execute material so we will discuss first meaning they are talking about what is the front end they say it is part of the overall software which actually interacts with the user which actually interacts with the user so as a user if you want to use a software you interact with what front end or back end you only interact with the front end but when we are talking about the back end it does not directly interact with the user next what is the purpose what is the purpose of your phone screen what is the purpose of any software screen what is the purpose of your laptop screen answer is it is meant for handling request from the user so as a user you submit your request for the front end then front end will talk with the back end and then back end will send information to the front end and as a user you can see that information now data it handles processed data so who processes the data the back end processes the data and front end 
gives the process data to the users. So if I'm giving some portal example, the, the difference could be the difference between waiter and the chef. Waiter is the front end and the chef is the back end. So as a user, whom do you see? You only see the waiter. You don't go and see who is the chef. So who talks to the chef? The waiter will go to and talk to the chef. Next one is language. So front end speaks which language? As a user, what you can see on your mobile screen, the user, the language could be English or it could be a vernacular language like it could be Hindi, it could be Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam and other languages or it could be Kannada as well. But so front end talks the language which the user speaks, but back end does not talk even English. Back end speaks its coding languages. Okay, so it is a programming language. Next is presentation. How it is presentation? So front end, the presentation is good. All the information, what you see on your mobile screen, it could be text, it could be graphics, it could be images, it could be presentation, charts. It is very colorful. So front end is more colorful, but the back end is a dull text. It is a dull text. So there is a question, sir, from where we get these questions? Again, for the people who just now joined, the questions are there in now. Uh, EIS, uh, sorry, uh, one pin application, that is an application by Indigo Learn. So there is a, in the resource section, you will find this particular notes. And if you don't find it there, then I'll try to put in the description below. The last difference, difference is UI, that is user interface. So front end software gets a user to, user to the desired software or the feature. So as a, as a user, we can use the front end to reach where you want. But back end is not designed to talk to the user directly, but talk to the front end. So that is question number nine. Now let us go to question number 10. Now question number 10 is differentiate between installed application and application. Now this is some way students were all confused. In the previous, previous material, in the previous, in the November 2019 attempt, this question was, what is the difference between installed application and web application? Now they simply changed, simply they changed from web application to cloud application. Take it from me, there is absolutely zero difference between web application and cloud application. Both are one and the same. But Institute failed, let us, let us just change the name and confuse the students. Hence, they change the name from web application to cloud-based application. So if you are reading question as installed application, web application, or installed by application and cloud-based application, answer is both one and the same. Now you tell me what is the difference between installed application and web application. You keep in your mind. Now, if I'm talking about installed application, I'm talking about a game which is installed in your computer. Let us say I do have a laptop of mine. I do have a laptop of mine and I'm installing some game in this computer. I'm installing some game in this computer. Then I'm going to call it as installed application. Now, there are certain games I don't have to install in my computer. I can directly play using internet. So I call it as cloud-based application. So they are asking what is the difference between Installed application and cloud-based application. Now you need to tell me what is the difference. So what is the meaning? So the meaning of installed application is this application is installed in the computer. So now let us say I do have 10 computers. How many times I have to install it? And I have installed it once and there is no, I have to go to each computer, sit there and I have to install it to 10 different computers. But as far as cloud-based application is concerned, you don't have to install it at all. You just have to create a user account that you should be knowing. So you go there, you create your account, you give your name, mobile number, email ID, everything. Then you get a, then you get a, a username and password, then you can directly access it. So there is a question, sir, website and cloud application is different or one and the same? Answer is it is one and the same. It is not website, it is web-based application or cloud-based application. So first difference is meaning, installed application installed in a computer, cloud-based application not installed in the computer. Next, so that there's a difference between meaning installation. Next one is maintenance. Now whose responsibility it is to maintain the software? So if I'm installing some software, some game to my own laptop, it is my headache to update this application. Correct. So, but if it is in, if it is online game or if it is cloud-based application, then I don't have to maintain this software. I don't have to maintain this software. Instead, the service provider will maintain the software. Next is software access. 
how do you access the game now if i'm talking about game how do you access the game so if i'm installing something in my laptop something in my laptop then if i want to play that game i need to have access to this laptop i can't access i can't install a game to my laptop here and go to my friend's house and play the game in his laptop because that software that game is not installed in his laptop but as far as cloud based application is concerned i can access it from any way as long as you have internet with me next is data storage very important point so in the installed application where is the data stored data is stored in the computer in the device but in the cloud based application where it is stored it is stored in the cloud in the internet so that comes to the next point data security you tell me you tell me which is more safe if the data if it is there in your computer is it more safe or if it is there in the cloud it is more safe the answer is data is more safe when it is in your computer because now let us say that you want to delete some information about yours okay so let us say you are using one software for accounting purpose and you want to delete that particular data can you delete it answer is yes because the computer is with you the software is with you so you can directly go ahead and delete that particular data as far as information in the cloud is concerned can you delete the data answer is yes you can go there and click an option called as delete but will it be really deleted or whether the service provider will have a copy of it or not you never know so data security is concerned it is if it is in the in your computer then user can well define physical security of the data but as far as cloud is concerned you don't have the security for your data next one is flexibility <coughs> now what is this flexibility point we are talking about flexibility in simple word it means let's take an example say i am in a shopping mall uh, so i run a shopping mall and uh, normally my customer just takes one clothes then they come to the billing counter then they keep their clothes so when i have to bill i just take my barcode scanner and i just scan that particular goods then i will bill it now this barcode scanner is connected to my computer this barcode scanner is okay there is a question i'll answer that question later so this barcode scanner is connected to my computer so automatically when i scan it, the entry is passed so if i want this type of feature then i have to go for installed application because installed application are flexible enough to add more hardware but as far as cloud based applications are concerned it is more complicated to you know add separate hardware to the software so these these are the difference between installed application and cloud based application so there is a question sir facebook we installed in device but data is in cloud then we can say it is installed application so what you are installing is just the application you are installing the application but information is never there in your device information still there in the cloud so the app what you are installing is for the ease of access so even that is nothing but a cloud based application so if you want to know the difference ask one simple question can you can you uh, access that particular software without the help of internet if you can access it without the help of internet then it means installed application and if you cannot access it without the help of internet then it is a cloud based application you need to ask the question about where is the data stored if it is there stored in your computer then it is installed application if it is stored in the cloud then it is uh, cloud based application i hope uh, i'm clear sir if i have game and it is new updates and i'm um, excited that cloud based application so do i have update or not so i <laughs> so very funny questions uh, so kindly kindly restrict your question to what is there in the syllabus but as far as the question is sir there is a soft there is a game in my computer and i want to update it to update i want internet so is it cloud based no it is the, the point was it is your head day to update it how do you update it is left to you you may connect it to internet and download it or you purchase a new series and update it that is all your headache next <clears throat> question is that is very very important question from your examination point and the very crux of the entire chapter that is write a short note on er that is enterprise resource planning now before we start discussing about erp let's let's discuss for 2 3 minutes what exactly erp is and why we want erp now i said this chapter is all about softwares when i say this is all about softwares i can use different softwares for different purposes now imagine a company and tell me what type of departments are there there could be manufacturing department there could be sales department there could be accounting department there could be marketing department so various departments are there now 
whether this department should use software first question if you say sir without the software also i can do accounting answer is yes you can do it there is no problem but remember the 17th century example so you will be far behind than your competitor so in order to in order to be competitive you have to use software so when you have to choose a software you can select you can select different 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 software for different different purposes okay now for accounting i may use a different software for marketing i may use a different software for hr for payroll i use a different software but when i am using different software there is one problem what is the problem the problem is the information is not integrated with each other not connected with each other now what do you mean by integrated let me give an example to you let us say that today is april 3rd so on let us say that on april 10th i want to imagine the, the the cops allow me to go so imagine i want to go from bangalore to delhi i want to go from bangalore to delhi and i book a flight ticket to book a flight ticket let us say i use a application called as make my trip very popular application i use an application called as make my trip and i book my flight ticket so once the seat is confirmed i'll get a email from make my trip saying that your ticket is confirmed your ticket is Uh, your ticket is confirmed so that is the email which i got now this particular email is sitting in my gmail account okay so that's it so this particular email is there in my gmail account now there is one more application called as google calendar there is one more application called as google calendar google calendar will automatically read that information automatically read that information and it will understand oh on 10th of april i am going from bangalore to delhi so in my calendar it will add that information saying that on 10th i have a flight to catch at morning 5 am from bangalore to delhi that's it so now i am asking you the question did i manually add this information in google calendar answer is no this is google calendar automatically fetched the data automatically took that data from gmail account now how is this possible this is possible because gmail and google calendar are integrated with each other are connected with each other so this is a very simple example of two application two softwares which are connected with each other so if i'm talking from a business perspective they may use different different softwares so if these softwares are connected with each other if connected with each other then you don't have to manually redo every task each and again each and every time because the software will start talking amongst themselves for me to do this i need to pick a software called as erp that is enterprise resource planning in simple word enterprise resource planning means one big software one big software which has small small softwares okay ERP is nothing but one big software which has small small softwares, and these small softwares are called as modules. These small small softwares are called as what? Modules. So in ERP there is a module called as accounting module. No, so accounting module means what? It is a small software for accounting purpose. There is another small software for HR. Another small software for manufacturing. Another small software for inventory. One small software for material management. so there are so many small softwares put together becomes one big software and that is called as enterprise resource planning now when i talk about enterprise resource planning one more thing what you have to remember is all these small small softwares will produce data okay accounting software will have data about accounting entries hr software will have information about your employees so where is this data stored this data is stored in one single database one single database so that is where i call it as all the softwares are integrated with each other are connected with each other and they are, the data is stored at one database so that is the main essential characteristic of erp so if i have to read what is erp the explanation goes and enterprise resource planning system is fully integrated business management system so the important word is what it is integrated covering functional areas of enterprise like logistic production finance accounting human resources so all these departments are connected with each other with each other with the help of a software so one question from divya tejasri is how can we protect ourselves from computer phone cracking things maybe we will be talking about more about this in the third chapter because third chapter talks about controls and other things i'll give answer there and uh, 
So that is what ERP is. Then they start talking about there is free flow of information from one department to another. Remember, I gave the example of information going from Gmail to my Google Calendar. So this is what I call it as free flow of information. So if I'm passing some entry in the accounting department, it has to go to some other department. Then I say it is free flow of information. Now let us say I make a sale. So who makes sale? People sitting in the sales department. If that information is directly going to my accounting department, then I'll call it as free flow of information. So again, from Divya, there is one question, sir, how the machine is understanding the binary language, programming language, C++, Java, etc., whatever the language is, how this machine understands? Uh, very good question, but it is way beyond our levels. But uh, in, in simple words, I'll type, uh, I'll type the code, what the code which I type, maybe in a different programming language, then there is a small compiler which will directly convert what I type into binary languages. Very technical thing, maybe, maybe it is not the right time. Then we just have one hour to discuss. Now, next question. Then they, then one more thing is ERP aims at one database, one application and one user interface. Then they give the example. Then they say there is a software called as SAP, then there is software called as Oracle, then there is software called as MFG. Some examples you need to write in your exams about ERP. Next question. Oh, we are done already with 52 minutes. So we have little time left. Let us quick enough. Differentiate between non-integrated system and integrated system. Now, difference between non-integrated system and integrated system. So what is non-integrated system? Now integration, you understood the meaning of integration. Integration means connected with each other. So integrated system means I have different softwares which are connected with each other. Then it becomes integrated system. And if I have softwares which are, which are not connected with each other, then I call it as non-integrated system, as simple as that. Okay, so integrated system means I have different software which are connected with each other. Non-integrated means I have software which are not connected with each other. So now, what is the meaning? <coughs> they say non-integrated system is a system of maintaining data in a decentralized way. That is, I told in ERP, ERP is an example of integrated systems. So in ERP, all these small, small software generates the data and this data is stored at one centralized place. One centralized place but in non-integrated system all these small small softwares are not connected with each other which are okay so voice is echoing mm. wait a second just okay so is it echoing now if my voice is audible and if it is proper just somebody just uh, say that you know what is normal So I'm waiting for your input. Is voice audible? Is it proper? <clears throat> okay, Subramanian said it is yes. So I go with Subramanian. I believe you. So that is the first thing. That is the, the example is. Uh, so all these small, small softwares generate information. And if it is stored in one single place, I call it as integrated system. And if it is stored in different, different places, in a decentralized places, I call it as non-integrated system. Next, database. Now, database, in integrated system, there is only one database. In non-integrated system, every software has its own database. Communication. So communication in the sense, whether do they talk with others, other departments or other software answer is it not integrated no they automatically don't talk you have to manually make them talk whereas integrated system is concerned they can automatically talk with other departments okay so that was about integrated and non-integrated next one is 13th question this is an again an rtp question list the features of erp now in the previous material, in the November 2019 material, for the question, the answer was different. So they changed the answer. So now, list the features of ERP. Now, imagine, imagine I purchased. Now, imagine this is a this is a mobile phone. It's not a mobile phone. Imagine that is what I'm asking to imagine. Imagine this is a new mobile phone which I purchased. Now I call up my friend and I'll tell. I call up my friend and I'll tell I purchased the new mobile phone. Now my friend will ask, what is what is the feature of your mobile phone? Then I'll start explaining. Oh, my phone has a 32 megapixel camera. It has 8 GB of RAM, Snapdragon processor. It has that, this. 
So this is the feature of a hardware. So at the same time, I have to explain the feature of a software. Let us say somebody who does not know what WhatsApp is, and I have to explain him what WhatsApp is. How do I explain it to him? Then I will tell. You. See, the WhatsApp is a software. It has different features. For example, you can send messages, you can send images, you can send videos, you can send your location. So these are the features of WhatsApp. Okay. So if somebody asks, let us say somebody asks you who does not know head and tail of what ERP is, and you have to explain him the features of ERP. So what are you going to tell? So you will say ERP offers multiple things. So I said ERP is a one big software. There are small small softwares called as modules. So you have to tell about different software modules. So ERP has different software modules. Which are those? There could be accounting module. There could be inventory module. There could be marketing module. There could be customer relationship module. Supply chain management module. All this module discussion we are going to have at a later part. A very in depth discussion we are going to have. But when somebody says what is the feature of ERP, you need to talk about what are the different softwares which are provided in that ERP. Am I am I clear with that? So you can talk about what are the different small small softwares which are provided in ERP. All right. So that is with question number thirteen. Next is. <coughs> What are the advantages of ERP? What are the advantages of using one software? What are the means information integration? Now I am not going to read that verbatim, read word by word. I am going to tell the meaning of it so that you can, after this class, you can read about it and understand it. So first one is information integration. That is, informations are integrated. So softwares are integrated and informations are connected. Or information is flown from one department to another department. So you don't have to do the work again and again. So just let us say you are passing the sale entry. You are passing the sale entry automatically. Automatically, the data is captured in your accounting software. Or let us say you are making payment of salary in your payroll module. That is in your HR module. Automatically, that information is sent to your accounting. Department, so automatically salary will get updated. So you don't have to manually pass another entry. So information is integrated, so it will save lot of time. Next one is reduction in <coughs> lead time. Now, what is this reduction in lead time? Very simple point. Let us say that I am running a supermarket. I am running a supermarket, and uh, I have a different department. So supermarket sale department is something else, and purchase department is something else. Now, sale department has sold one item. One item. Let us say these days, which is the item which is being sold the most. Uh, let us say some hand sanitizer. Okay, so sale department has sold let us say 80 percentage of the hand sanitizer in one day. And let us say they are not going to inform about the same to the purchase department. Purchase department will not purchase more stock. So because of this information gap, supermarket may lose its sale. So because of ERP. The sale department don't have to talk with your purchase department. Automatically, when the stock is reduced, when the stock is reduced, it will generate report and purchase department will place the order. So hence, there won't be any material shortage. Next is on-time shipment. Similar point. Reduction in cycle time, increased flexibility, better customer satisfactions. These are the easier points which you can understand by reading. I wouldn't uh, go on uh, explaining this because. Uh, we are running out of time, and not being not that not being the point that is a, uh, it is an easier explanation what you can understand it. So as it is being a revision video, I want to focus on the more important aspects. One question from Suchi: If one department mistake is there, for example, inventory, so whole process will disturb. How it will correct and track this small department software? A very beautiful question. Very good question. That is. When everything is integrated, if somebody makes a mistake, if somebody makes a mistake, it is mistake everywhere. It is mistake everywhere. That is where you got to be extra careful. That is where you got to be extra careful when you are passing the entries. That is where proper training is necessary, proper control is necessary. About which we are going to discuss subsequently. But yes, answer is if you make mistake at one place and if it is not detected, that mistake will impact all your other departments. Next, there is a question number fifteen. That is, ERP is not free from limitation. They are asking about drawbacks of drawbacks of ERP. 
Now, this question was there in the November 2019 material. In recent material, they have removed this question. So, you can easily, you can around say, strike it out. This is not going to come for your examination. So, I've kept this question on purpose. That is, uh, even if you have you started preparing for November 2019 attempt, then if you feel that, uh, you know, should I read this question also? Answer is no, you shouldn't read the answer. Next question, question number 16. What are the major modules that are integrated in an ERP system? We already studied the answer. Now, because that is what I'm saying previously, features of ERP was different and this question was different. Now, they simply removed this question and they made it as features of ERP. So in examination, if they ask what are the different features of ERP, you are going to write about the different software modules. Even if they ask, write about the major modules, you are going to answer the same answer. Next. 17th question that is write short note on risk and controls in ERP system. What are the risks in ERP system and how can you control it? One risk is the question that is if somebody makes a mistake, everywhere it is a mistake. How can you control it by properly training your employees? You can control it or by properly checking, periodical checking or as an auditor, when you go for an audit, that is the role of the auditor. You go and you see and you say, oh, this is a mistake because of this mistake, everywhere there is a mistake. So even that could be a control. But in the material, it is answered everyone. First risk is data access. Department has access to this database. Every department has access to this database. That means, thus, the person who is working in the accounting department has access to sales department information. Answer is yes. Whether the person who is working in HR department has access to purchase department information, answer is yes, because the data is stored at one place. So what is the risk? Risk is in organization, as the owner of the organization, I don't want my employees to know everything about my business because he also may start another business as a competitor. So I want to restrict what he knows about my business. How can I restrict it? I can assign roles. I can assign roles, something called as role-based access control or need to know basis. So let us say there is an employee who is working in sales department. So I have to give access only of sales department information. If somebody is working in accounts department, I need to give him access only for accounts department job. So if somebody wants to know the address of one employee, let us say that information is there in the HR department. All employee information survey, it is there in the HR department. One person in the accounting department wants to know the address of one of the employee. Can you have an access? Answer is no. As an owner, as a manager, you need to restrict the access of your accounting employee to only accounting related tasks. So again, there's a question. If auditor won't be able to track, so it will affect its report. Answer is yes. That is the main reason we have this subject. So, so that as an auditor, when you become chartered accountants tomorrow, you need to know that there is huge responsibility on your shoulder. You need to be very, very thorough when you are going to check the ERP of the clients. Next is data safety or data safety. That is, I said, in ERP, all the small, 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 small software data is stored at one, at one place. Okay. Now, let us say because of some fire accident, this data is deleted. Because of some employee by mistakenly went, right click, press delete, entire data is gone. So now, all the accounting information is lost, sales information lost, HR information lost, all the information is lost. Now, how can you prevent this risk? By taking proper backups. Next one is operation speed. Operation speed refers to simple. When you when you when you purchase when you purchase a mobile phone, it, it will be super fast. You just swipe it up, it will go up. But after two three months, you swipe up, it will not go up. You swipe up, it will start coming down. So again, after two three years, it will not even open. You keep on pressing the unlock button, it will not unlock. Same way is with every software. So even your ERP, when you purchase, it will be super fast. But as and when you go on adding, dumping more data from all the different modules, your ERP will become slow. So once it becomes slow, all your employees will get pissed. They will be angry. If you want to pass one simple sale entry, it is going to take five minutes. It's going to take 10 minutes. People will stop passing the entries. So what is the control? Control is as and when the time passes, you need to upgrade your hardware. Maybe initially you had 8 GB RAM, then you need to replace it with 16 GB RAM, 32 GB RAM. So you need to do the hardware upgradation. Next one is change in process. Now this is the risk. Now what is the risk? Now imagine ERP. ERP has a, a structure which is made out of playing cards. Okay. 
out of playing cards. Somebody is a real example of ERP of one company of uh, Anjana Devi. I'll give, I'll give that one real life example also. Change in process. Change in process means imagine, imagine what structure you created out of these playing cards. So you keep cards very delicate, very delicate, top and top, you kept those cards. Now, if you want to remove some card from the bottom, what will happen? Entire structure will fall, correct? So you can change one thing without impacting the other module. So when everything is connected, that is a problem. So if you want to change one sim, one small part, it is going to impact many other parts. So what can you do? So when you are creating your ERP, you need to properly document that how this ERP is created, which module, which software is connected to which other module. So that, let us say, your sales module is connected with your accounting module. So you need to write it down when you are writing this ERP, when you are creating this software, so that when you want to make some changes in the sales module, you will know that if you make some changes in the sales module, it will impact accounting department as well, and you can make necessary changes. Next is soft turnover. This is the major problem, major headache. Whenever you hire an employee, you can't directly send him to do the Generate, pass some use, uh, make him pass entries in ERP system. First thing is you have to train him for four to five months. You will train him on a regular basis. This is how your ERP looks like. This is what UI is. This is how you pass the entries and many other things. But what your employees do? They will just take the trainings for four or five months. Once your training is done, then they will leave your organization and go. Now you don't have enough skilled people to pass the entries. If you don't have skilled people, what will happen? Some person who does not know head and tail of ERP is going to pass wrong entries and is going to impact the entire software. So as a management, as a owner of the company, what you should do? You should reduce the staff turnover. You should keep the employees happy. How can you keep them happy? By providing them proper training, providing them proper compensation, proper salary, and you need to make them enjoy their jobs. At the same time, you can also give them proper operational manuals, in which if they have some doubts, they can quickly open the book and they can solve their doubts. Next one is system failure, major risk. Now imagine one day the software gets corrupted. It does not even open at all. So all the softwares are there in this one big software and if this does not open, you, you cannot pass any sale entry, purchase entry, receipt, payment, nothing. The organization will be standstill. It won't function at all. So. <clears throat> That is where you need to have a proper backup system in place. You need to have a proper disaster recovery plans. What should you do when? What should you do if ERP is not working? All these things you need to plan in advance. So this is about risk and controlling ERP. Mark this question as important. Okay, next. So we have completed around one hour, eight minutes, and we have completed around 18 questions. Uh, but I certainly feel we should uh, stop here for the day. Two more questions, we could have completed it, but uh, we are hitting the time. So we will catch up tomorrow, and we will complete this chapter. Till then, I can uh, make one, uh, please. I want, you, I want a favor from your end, that is, I want you to sit and revise this eight, uh, all 18 questions what we discussed. I want you to revise it. All right. So this material I'll provide in the description. Uh, if you don't want to wait till it comes in description, go to one pin application in the resources tab. You have uh, three notes. Uh, you can download this. Whether you are a student of Indigo Loan or whether you are not a student of Indigo Loan, you can still have it. It is a freely available notes. Well then. Uh, Okay, so now for the next five to six minutes from the questions what we discussed, I want to take up questions. So if you have questions, now you post it. So somebody is asking me, explain XBRL, sir. XBRL is tomorrow's concept. Just uh, uh, wait for one day. Then one more question that is, what is the difference between hardware virtualization and hardware mocking? In your syllabus, there is hardware virtualization. There is nothing called as hardware mocking, but it is again there in the fourth chapter. 
So I'll not spoil your suspense and I want you to wait when we do the revision video of fourth chapter. We will do that as well. So hardware virtualization is a very interesting concept. So, sir, can you go learn? Can provide any option for doubt clearance? There is in the one thin application itself. There is a place where you can provide your questions and write it till your examination. I'll be available there. So, any questions you post, if nobody answers, at the end of the day, have it answered. Thank you, Yamini. And, uh, yes. So, I. I'll wait for 30 more seconds, and if there is no questions, I presume that either you understood everything what we discussed or nothing. So in either case, I'm going to stop this. So let me wait for 30 more seconds. So in ERP, by combining all the departments, then only we can prepare financial reports. Answer is yes, yes. So we can have a very separate software. We can use a separate software for accounting. Then also we can prepare the reports. So normally all these small, small organization does not have ERP. Let me tell you, ERP costs a bomb. If you want ERP, then it will cost crores of rupees for you to have ERP in your organization. So only bigger organization can think of ERP. All these smaller organization have separate softwares. For accounting, they use a software called as Tally. Okay, so normally the tally name itself is tally ERP, but take it from me, tally is not an ERP. So Tarun Kumar, are you, okay, which state I am from? I am from a state called as Karnataka. So, but does, does not matter the state I am, if everybody are sitting at home. So some questions, so tally is an ERP? No, tally is not an ERP. Tally. The name is Tally ERP, but Tally is 90% is focused about only accounting point of view. So a little bit of payroll part is there, but apart from that, uh, it is it is not a full-fledged ERP system. You have to do a lot of customization to make it as a ERP. And somebody asked at that time, uh, can you give a real example of ERP? Answer is yes. Uh, uh, all these, all the bigger companies, now let us say any shopping mall you go, they use ERPs. So normally what happens, one shopping mall, let us say you go to pantaloons. So pantaloons have so many shirts, so many pants, kutta and other, I don't know. So all the, uh, all the clothing materials. So they have the software called, uh, they have the software, they use the software where there is inventory module in which all the information about the materials are stored. They have a software for sales. They have a software for purchases. They have a software for each and everything. And all these softwares are 